this video, we're going to see what geneticists mean when they say they're conducting a test cross. And I have once again um, set up, set myself up for um, understanding the story problem. So let's say we're talking again about breeding individuals and looking at the color of their flowers. So be breeding pea plants. And we know that in peas, they will have purple flowers if they have at least one copy of the dominant allele. Doesn't matter what this is. Could be a little C, could be a big C. If they have two copies of the recessive allele, they're gonna have white flowers. So the reason why a test cross is necessary is because an individual with purple flowers could have either one of these genotypes. They could be heterozygous or they could be homozygous dominant. So the test cross allows us to determine the genotype or the combination of alleles in an individual showing the dominant phenotype. So these are really simple Punnett squares. This individual is either gonna have a big C or a little c in their gametes the individual with white flowers doesn't have any genetic diversity for this trait. They're always going to have little c's. So this cross is showing me that if the dominant individual, the purple flowered individual, is heterozygous, I should expect a 1 to 1 ratio of purple and white flowers in their offspring. So for every one purple, I should expect to find one white flowered individual. If, on the other hand, the individual with purple flowers is homozygous dominant, the square is even more simple because each of these parents can only make one, only has one kind of allele. So all of their offspring are going to be heterozygous and they should all be purple. So it should be fairly easy to tell the genotype of a purple flowered individual using a test cross. We can look at the ratio of offspring from the test cross. If it's one to one, then that individual is heterozygous. If they're all purple, then that individual must have been homozygous dominant. Thanks for watching.